Hello everyone, I promised you a recap of the emotional uh, video that I did before. Not me, me being emotional, but how your emotional system actually work according to science. Uh, I know that was a bit um, dodgy doing it in at home with a reverb in the room. Sounded awful. Um, I decided to do it here just after the, the uh, one I did this morning. Anyhow, when it comes to emotions, emotions are made up of a trigger and then a refractory period of four seconds. Usually you go into it, go out of it, go into it, go out of it, go into it, go out of it. As I told you in, uh, with the neuroticism trait, when you are high in neuroticism or emotional instability, you keep on hanging on to that feeling for a longer period of time. The anger feeling, the anxious feeling, feeling vulnerable, uh, feeling awful about yourself, feeling jealous. The interesting thing about emotions is that uh, Paul Ekman hasn't proven this yet, but he has somewhat shown it in his research that if you, for example, get scared or frightened by someone, the next feeling that kicks in is anger or being sad, starting to cry. Those are interconnected. So some feelings are actually connected to each other. It's the same thing if you scare someone or surprise them really much. They actually can start laughing afterwards or getting angry, depending on how they are in the neuroticism trait and in extroversion. So they are interconnected. But you should understand that out of the seven uh, emotions that are the basis of uh, human emotionality, um, five of them are connected to neuroticism and only one is connected to the positive circuit, the extroversion trait. So you might ask, ask yourself, why is it in this way that we have so many more emotions, five to one, that is connected to your pain circuit? Well, you do have to realize that the society that, that you live in today is, is a civilization that has evolved. In previous time, the, the human as a species needed to survive in another manner. It needed to run when there was danger, it needed to hide, it needed to be, feel scared, uh, so to, to protect itself. So that's why you have probably more emotions that are connected to the pain circuit that makes you want to protect yourself, in a manner of speaking. Um, there, is, there is a good example of how to question yourself and your, your values and that is the feeling of boredom. Some of you might ask yourself, why does boredom even exist? Why do I feel bored? Well, you need to take that into perspective. Take, for example, when you're doing something that makes you happy, really happy, that gives you dopamine. Uh, for example, drinking, if you're a happy drinker or an alcoholic. If you don't get bored, how would you ever stop doing what you love and go and eat? You'll die. There's actually been movies made about this that try and take out, as an experiment, take out the hostility in people. Well, hostility is needed. It balances it all out. And that's also a good thing to think about when it comes to looking for happiness. Happiness isn't an end game, it's a dopamine kick, that's all it is. If you are having a dopamine kick all the time, you're overdoing it. That's basically gym alcoholic, training alcoholic, being dependent on training every single day. You get addicted to that too, because it gives you a dopamine surge um, or a serotonin surge. And you get addicted to it because you need it every time. That's why behaviors are so important for you to understand and which ones you have so that you don't get trapped in bad behaviors, basically, that will make you suffer in the long end. Like I said about conscientiousness, conscientious people go to the gym all the time. And if you're neurotic as well, your pain circuit, you want to, want to remedy that 
what do you do? Well, you might actually start to train and your conscientiousness will make you train every day to give you that surge in the extrovert trait, the dopamine kick. And in the end, after six months, you'll be trapped in a bad behavior, which is in fact the same as being an alcoholic or a drug addict. It's basically the same thing. And if you keep on losing weight all the day, all the time, well, that's not good for you at all. Because if you look at the BMI, for example, you're not supposed to be weighing too little. And the dangers about conscientiousness and being high in that trait is that you actually do get anorexia from it. You hate diseases and you start to repel and hate people on the commute that sneezes, for example, because you're disgusted with it and you start hating them. And the neuroticism trait will kick in and help you do that and hate people. And you see how that spirals out of control just for having three traits being high in those, extroversion and conscientiousness and neuroticism. It's not a good thing. And that's why I mean you need to fess up with that you are what you are and do something about it because, because it ca can be dangerous for you. And the bad part about emotions is that the simplest way. The old books in religion speaks about a tooth for a tooth and an eye for an eye. That's exactly the basis of emotions. And you can test this with your spouse at home. If you make your spouse angry, watch him or her the next few hours and day and you'll see how that will come back to you as either passively aggressiveness or they'll pay you back so that you feel it yourself. You just need to be aware of not continuing that cycle because one bad thing in anger will fuel the other opponent's anger and they will give it back in some way and then give it back and you see how that loops. You need to kick in your system too, your logical part and understand that that's passive aggressiveness because I did this to that person before. That's the bad part about when women tries to anger their men at home because it's fun and they push it. That's a bad thing because they're going to get it back one way or the other and then they don't like it and then you have the cycle of it. So don't try and get a kick out of angering your spouse or your partner. That's not a very good and smart way because it's detrimental in the end to your relationship. Even though science also proves how many good things and bad things you need in a relationship in order for it to persist or last longer. Do you want the formula? All right, I'll give, you to it, give it to you. Every single day in a relationship, you need one bad thing and a minimum of five good things and a maximum of 11 good things. So you need to stay within five to 11 good things and one bad thing each and every day in a relationship in order for it to, to persist and linger. Which means that you can't be a 100% good guy or a good girl because the other party will actually don't like you anymore and they'll lose the connection because you need one, one bad thing. But you can see the relationship, how there needs to be more good things than bad things. And that has to do with probably your emotions. Like I said, you have five negative emotions that go straight for your neuroticism trait in your pain circuit and only one for the good, for the, the good circuit, the dopamine one. And that is an equilibrium probably between emo your emotions, emotional system and the real world. So it balances it nicely out. Um, that's probably the basic thing about to know about emotions that they'll pay you back if you anger someone. If you scare someone, they'll pay you back as well. If you make someone anxious, they'll pay you back in the same regard in some way or another. And it's very easy to see that once you acknowledge it and understand it. If you by accident make someone angry or scared, watch that person. If that person doesn't do it openly, you'll get it back in some way, in some way. You will never get out of it. 
it takes a very highly developed brain to understand that you shouldn't go do that bad stuff to someone that made you angry you need to uh, have come to the conclusion that by forgiving the person and not condoning what they did but forgiving them you actually move on yourself and don't lose energy through neuroticism due to that situation and that's progress and that's being more wise than not forgiving the person in question for what they did because in the end you win nothing when you don't forgive a person and as I told you in the previous uh, personality videos it is immensely complex 205 trillion different combinations of personalities don't think that you know them all or understand them but do understand that you're one personality in so many others and that there are many different types of persons personalities than yours so don't do the mistake and go back to your own experiences and think that that's how the world works because it isn't it's probably not just take it to the five traits and the, the 243 combinations of the five traits you're just one of them the other ones think differently than you so when you ask for um, consultation from a dear friend of yours uh, about your own relationship with your partner well that person will go to their experiences and give you that feedback and that has nothing to do with your relationship with your partner which will in fact be availability heuristics availability heuristics heuristics is what newspapers and news and t the television is using to manipulate you that's actually how we are manipulated because we draw conclusions from our experiences and by asking our friend for example watching tv and watching a good movie that we don't distinguish from the reality we draw conclusions that that's how, the way it is when it's not so when a friend tells you that that's a bad behavior from your partner why did he do that and they don't have the context of it all and not emotion involved so the consequences for what they say and the impact of it is none of their concern so if they tell you to that's not a good thing because I've been experiencing this and that so I've seen the bad thing about that that happened well that was with that personality that they're referring to they have no understanding of the personality of your partner so what they are saying is skewed and has little to no worth and trust me I've been studying this a lot with people especially around me and testing them in how they respond and people tend to respond very basically they do go back to their own experiences and if they get neurotic or afraid they'll answer according to that feeling and that has nothing to do with your relationship with your partner and it'll make you not commit to the relationship and fess up to what you've done yourself and what you have to do in the relationship in order for it to persist usually when we speak about relationships and emotions in relationships you can use family therapy and people don't realize that therapy when it comes to two people going together is about connecting it's about feeling empathy for your partner because through empathy we do connect to our partner and that has to do with actively listening to your partner in order to understand your partner and actively listen properly you need to not think about what you're going to say but listen to what the person is saying and then imagining what emotion is this person experiencing now and when the person has done is done talking you will recap what the persons have said and ask did I understand you correctly this is what you say and this is how you feel if you can do that you have actively listened and that's what you actually need to do in a relationship in order for it to persist that's called 
empathy, that's giving your time and yourself to really understand your partner, and that person will then respond in the same regard eventually. However, it'll, you can't ask a neurotic, high neuroticism person to go into that state of mind immediately. But then again, if two people are neurotic, high neuroticism, that relationship is never going to work. Probably not even high neuroticism, middle neuroticism, because you, one party needs to be emotionally stable, not reacting to be able to disconnect from the feelings that the neurotic person will enforce through speaking. Because threats and accusations is very common when we talk about neurotic people. That's they go to when they feel sad or angry or whatever has happened. Uh, so do try and do that. Try to recap what the person has said, summarize it so that you have understood the person properly and also tell the person, is this how you feel about this? If they say yes, then you can think about a response. If the person keeps on talking, you can ask them, can you please just hold on? I need to think about the response so it's proper. That's called communication. And that's what everyone thinks they're good at, but in fact they're not. And that takes a lot of practice to be quiet and actually listen to your partner or whoever it is you're listening to, if it's a friend or whatever. You need to train for this all the time because it's a, not, not something you're born with. You need, you need to control your feelings in order to actually listen properly. Anyhow, that was a short one about emotions. I know I'm usually dragging this on and babbling along, but I hope that has put things in perspective about system one, the emotional part, which doesn't need sugar to function. It draws conclusions quickly. And then your system two, which questions your system one through logic. And that needs sugar, glucose to function. So you need to eat. So before it's lunchtime, when your blood sugar is very low, you will not be able to use your logical system, your system two, to question your system one. That's why you do the bad choices when it comes to food preferences when you're hungry. That's why you shouldn't go shopping, food shopping, when you in fact are hungry. Food boxes that are prepared before is a much better way to go, to stay slim, healthy, and not be subjected to the lower end of conscientiousness, which gives you 40% greater risk of having a shorter lifespan. That's interconnected into that. Anyhow, thank you so very much for listening and watching. If you liked it, thumbs up disliked it thumbs down please write a comment and tell me what you are curious about and if i should talk about something else or explain it even more and better because here this is it if i can't tell you and explain for you in a proper manner you need to tell me that give me that feedback so i'll do it better next time so that you do understand what i'm talking about thank you so very much for for watching I hope you have a great day or had a great day. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>